a mighty jubilant, an extraordinary traveler, adventurer, and scientist, explorer, blah. How do you know I'm the commander? I haven't introduced myself. And Jubilos adjusts his glasses. Obviously, it's about my cumin. Surely you didn't expect a renowned scientist to be so ignorant as not to recognize the most significant historical figure of this region and era? Uh, you're asking me to fix your cart? Me? The commander of the Fifth Crusade and wielder of mythical power? Why not? Perhaps your mythical power allows you to snap your fingers and make a new cart materialize. If not, I would be grateful if you would fix this one. Please. I'll see what I can do. Ah, oh, this is wonderful. I don't th think me an ungrateful lord. Um, I'll be sure to mention your generosity in the article I write about this encounter. I'm going to take some notes and you may get started on the repairs, Commander. Well, fix the wheels. After 10 minutes of work and a little bit of ingenuity, the wheel slides back in place, none the worse for wear. Ah, a thought just occurred to me, Commander, says Jubilos, who barely pays attention to your attempts to repair his cart. What do you think of your place in history? You're a mortal who acquired the powers of an angel of heaven. Do you feel this is where you belong? Is this an attempt to interview me? Mm, were this an interview, I'd be asking you awkward questions. I have plenty, believe me. Jubilus looks at you through his glasses as if he knows your every secret. I could start by asking about the source of the mythical power that made all of Mendev consider you the chosen one of the gods, and then move on to asking, how does it feel to be the hero in one of the greatest scams in modern history? But I'm not doing this. I'm merely satisfying my curiosity. Perhaps uh, my fate has been far from ordinary, but I am satisfied with the path I've chosen and the person I've become. And are those forced to follow you happy? Those who depend on you? Jubilos adjusts his glasses. Or are you one of those people who goes around ahead without bothering to ask the opinions of others? Then again, who am I to lecture one of the greatest figures of our time? I'll be on our way and Desna will aid you. I'll just stand here by the side of the road and take some notes. Do you revere Desna too? You must have travelled far and seen much. The goddess's smiles upon wanderers. Ah, oh, a sister Desna, and of a very unusual kind. Jubilus looks at Urshale with curiosity. Yes, I've been to many places and I hope to visit many more, but I am surprised at your admiration. Does Golarion truly overshadow the wonders of extraplanar travel for you? In the past, I did not travel. I hunted. I saw no wonders. I did not understand the delight of walking the road, seeing new places, or making new acquaintances. So, you have surely seen more than I have, because I could not see. My eyes were closed. Then I wish you to keep them open and see all that you wish to see. It's worth it to spend a lifetime traveling, or even more than one. Well, let's calm the ponies. The pony's eyes seem oddly intelligent. You get the uneasy feeling the ponies are playing along with your attempts to calm them, chuckling to themselves. Still, they obediently stand where they're supposed to, ready to pull the cart. And we're going to clear the way for the cart. But why couldn't they have just gone around? Are you, are you kidding me? The efforts are not in vain. The pile of junk blocking the path has been swept aside. Well, that's it. I did what I could, and we are nearing the end game, and this just gave us 60 experience. I mean, that's a joke. What? Uh, oh, oh, yes. Well, I suppose I should be on my way. How unfortunate. I haven't yet satisfied my curiosity, but what can you do? Time waits for no one. I have the feeling there's something you're not telling me, Mr. Nathropel. There are some strange slips in your speech and demeanor. Hmm... Jubilus pauses. I must admit, acting is not one of my talents. I was hoping to casually run into you in a completely natural way, then ask a few questions, but it is tricky to appear natural when this chance encounter takes place in the middle of the world wound and you come 
from the future. Jubilist pauses again for dramatic effect. Yes, exactly as I said. Some of my friends, many in number, but acting as one, can do the most curious things to me. I humbly ask them for an opportunity to meet the legendary commander of the Fifth Crusade in person. I desperately wanted to take a few notes on such a faithful, fateful figure in Golarion's history for my article on the Age of Lost Omens. I hope you're not angry about this small masquerade, and even if you are angry, I'm still satisfied. The Age of Lost Omens, one of the five major historical ages. One that we find ourselves today. Of course, so he is from the future. <laughs> okay. Well, that makes sense. And best of luck to you. I hope you come by with these parts again. My apologies, but a thousand more discoveries await me. I can't stay in one place too long, but I am glad to have met you. This conversation provided me with much food for thought. Farewell, Commander. Having already turned his cart, Jubilus suddenly slaps himself on the forehead. I almost forgot. I was asked to give you this. A golden toad. Who told him to give us a golden toad? The heck? What? So time traveling is a thing in the Pathfinder universe? Golden Toad. A toad statue made of solid gold. It looks more like an idol than a decorative figurine. Okay. What the heck? This game is odd. Um, but I like it. Is there anything here for us to do? No. Okay. I do what I must. Hmm. Oh, before we continue, I oh, know I can't do this now. I wanted to see Grey Boar's character story. Soulless, yeah. The Blessed, done. Final verdict, done. What do you dream of, done? Yeah, Nino. Her story isn't done at all. Hmm. This is the remote corner of the world wound where Mochasif and set a secret hideout. One can only guess how cruel were the experiments conducted here and how many unfortunate prisoners have seen this place. Of course we're going to destroy everything we see. Why are these... why are they dead? Oh, ay ay ay! This oh looks God. very official. Should we do that now? Find Utasifen, Cascade of Fire. Well, that seems to be very important. Hmm. Well, let's do it. I don't like this. Katir throws up his hands in frustration. That horn scum is too cunning. We still don't know the secret of his immortality. Don't lose hope now. If my sister's plan is successful, everything we've done and everything we've sacrificed, it will not have been in vain. This war spares no one. At least we can take solace in the thought that it is coming to an end. I think I've been to this place before. I came across it during my travels, but I didn't know where there, there was a lab. I wonder how long Machasifin has been at this location. Look. The commander is here. The sanctuary has successfully repelled Mutasifen's attack. The temple's inhabitants are safe. Katea gives you a brief, grateful nod. Thank you both for your help and for the good news. I was supposed to defend the shrine, but circumstances dictated otherwise. At least I no longer need to worry about the sanctuary. The stargazers are safe. They don't need me to survive. The power that I possess does not come from heaven, but from the blood of demon lords. Does that scare you? My sister, Tagonor, has a demonic wing woven from the essence of the abyss, but 
It has not corrupted her soul, and I do not think you will be corrupted by your non-Hindrian powers either. You are not defined by your past. Despite its dark origins, you use your power to do good, not evil, and that is what is important. I don't know much about these special powers, but Eliandola and her stargazers were overjoyed when you visited the shrine. They wanted to investigate the origins of your power and read your fate in the stars. They may not have known you very well, but they believed your abilities were a gift. Eliandra spoke about your future. She said that there were many paths ahead of you, but one of those paths led to goodness and light, to your ascension. If she believed that, I believe it too. And you continue to prove yourself worthy of my trust. I disobeyed Ayomide. She wanted to take away the power I received from our Elu, but I refused. Will you continue to follow me after that? Of course I will. You saved me from the scorching flames of the abyss. How could I ever abandon you? Don't you know my story? I am probably the most disobedient paladin to ever serve Ayomide. I have a long history of disobeying my superiors, so this is nothing new. Now I'm just disobeying the goddess directly. I am a warrior, not a theologian, but I always imagined that the goddesses favours the bold and the brave, not the timid and the obedient. So I don't think it's a sin to disobey her instructions, but even if I'm wrong, we can't turn back now. Not when we've almost finished what we set out to do. I do not worship the goddess Iomide, but if Polura herself came down to me in all her glory and ordered me to abandon you. I still do not think I would obey. This war is being fought by mortals, not gods. It is us, not them, who will decide when it is over. I thought Targona had a plan. What happened to her? How was she taken captive? Oh, don't worry. She does have a plan, and I think you'll like it. I, on the other hand, do not like it at all. My sister's life is at risk. She is in grave danger. That angel is no coward. When we realized that Mutasifin had escaped again, she devised a way to catch him. The monster takes great interest in anything that is powerful and unusual, especially if it has something to do with the experiments of his mentor, Arelu Volesh. Of course, Targona herself was one of Arelu's experiments. She allowed herself to be captured by Mutasifin's servants so that she could lead us to his whereabouts, and she did. She managed to relay the information about his location. She's the only reason we were able to find this place. So what's the plan? We're going to try the same strategy that we used in the Abyss against Baphomet. We'll form a chain of living wardstones. This will prevent Mutasifin from teleporting away, but we don't know if it will hinder his ability to escape through death. Still, it's worth a try. We need you to go inside, find Targona and kill that horned scum. Make him pay for all the suffering he's inflicted. Send him back to the Abyss, cowering in fear. Or better yet, make sure he is never resurrected again. Let's see. Well, no, let's go. I'm worried about my sister. I spoke against this plan from the beginning. I told her that it was far too risky, but she would not be dissuaded. I hope we will be united soon. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> okay. We do it my way. ranks. something here. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm off. Tassifin's working notes. I was convinced that this line of research had reached a dead end, but it turns, it turns out I just didn't have the right material. Of course, the plane form forming principle is well known and is quite typical for everything that originates from the abyss. When there are two things out of the same kind, one will try to suppress the other or devour it. That is why a source of Nahindrian power will block all other sources of the same power. However, I have never succeeded in creating a Hindrian demon capable of suppressing the Hindrian powers of other demons. This outcome is theoretically possible. In fact, it is theoretically probable. By the way, I read about the secret ending, and apparently we we're still we were already we did so many mistakes. It's impossible, especially since apparently every time you fight a demon lord in the game. Um, before you defeat him, you need to use a Midnight Bolt to extract a Hindrian Crystal. And then in the end, big spoiler, uh, ignore the next 20 seconds. Now. The spoiler is um, you can ascend to a Godhood. And if you have a Hindrian Crystals, the number decide how many of your well allies will ascend with you. And if you have six, not only you, your allies, but also a Wallash will ascend to Godhood. <clears throat> spoiler ending, spoiler ending, spoiler ending. <laughs> Yet, for some reason, all my attempts to create such a demon have ended in failure. So I decided to try a different approach, and it has yielded some excellent results. I have managed to create an Ahindrian angel capable of suppressing a demon's Ahindrian powers. Ooh. Now, this can happen only once, because it requires the subject's termination. But who cares? Angels are expendable. If I manage to recreate the process that Arelo used when implanting Tagona's wing, I'll be able to make a dozen of these anti nahindrian bombs, and then <laughs> no one in the abyss will dare to challenge me. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, let's save her. Agona approaches you slowly. You notice that the angel's appearance has changed. She looks ghostly pale, but her cheeks are flushed, as if with fever. Her demonic wing looks more dangerous, more menacing. Her eyes burn with power, but it is not the power of heaven. Tagona, what is wrong? There's a strange look in the angel's eyes. She seems aloof and remote, like a distant ray of light piercing through the darkness of the dense forest. Mutasifin finished what Aredo started. As you know, the power of the Dahindrian crystals only works on demons, on those who have something of the demonic in them. And I, I have a demonic wing. He has corrupted me with the cursed Nahindrian power. You were implanted with a Nahindrian crystal? Yes, the angel says bitterly. Now the blood of demon lords run through my veins. Why would Mutasifin do that? He wants to create another world wound. He's been muttering about keys and about creatures with dual natures who have connections to two different planes. I think he's trying to replicate Arelo's experiments, and I was an ideal subject. This power flows through my blood as well, but I have managed to withstand its corrupting influence. Do not despair. You are stronger than I am, the angel whispers, but I cannot withstand this corruption forever. This poisonous power is so strong, and I grow weaker with every passing moment. But... I will overcome this evil. I will find a way. Tell me again what you learned about Mutasifin. Mutasifin has created multiple copies of himself. He used a single Nahindrian crystal to imbue all of them with power. If he is killed, his consciousness is immediately transferred into a new body. There is no way to prevent this transference, at least not by any ordinary means. He's also hidden these bodies in different locations, making them almost impossible to find. It won't be easy to finish him off, unless, well, I have an idea, but I'll explain later. Uh, Mutasifin stole some valuable research from Pulura's temple. Do you know where it is? Tagona shakes her head. He arrived here empty-handed. If he stole something from the temple, he didn't bring it here. It's probably in the abyss by now, or perhaps he's hidden it somewhere in another, another location. Well, I doubt we'll able to. Well, we'll able. We'll be able to get it back. 
Well, I think it's time we pay Mutasifin a visit. He has a lot to answer for. I agree. Let's go. He's not far. Uh, let me quickly check. Do we have another weapon that's more fitting? A uh, gear. What gear? Oh, right. Baphomet's fiery robe. Let's see how that. Okay. Overlord's chainmail. That, oddly enough, doesn't look terrible, but it's not what I want. Hmm. A long sword, everything. Holy devotee's wrath. Okay. Yeah, that's our old weapon. Well, that doesn't help me very much. One handed. Ah, uh, one handed, one handed. Okay, that doesn't help us. Hmm. Defenders Nemethys. Archeon. Yeah, that doesn't help us. Sacred Studies. Cloak. Mm, no, thank you. Um, but I want to see how the robe looks like so this is um this is baphomet's fiery robe oh it indeed doesn't look terrible but it's not what we will need yeah yeah it's doesn't it doesn't fit any profile yeah it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all hmm that doesn't look terrible. But no. This doesn't fit her profile. I'm going to give her this armor again. Um, yeah. Honestly, that's exactly what she needs. Okay. Interesting. It's time to act! A trivial task. I'm gone. Oh, it's you again, huh? Oh, how many times have you tried to kill me now, eh? Oh, when are you going to realize that you can't win? You are stronger than I am, of course. Alilu is certainly pumped enough in crystal essence into your veins, but I'm smarter than you and I have plenty of time to continue my experiments. It's only a matter of time before I have a champion of my own. Someone who can match your power. And soon I'll open my own world wound. Actually, I may open more than one. And that will make me even more powerful. As for you, well, <laughs> I've no... I know I've said this before, but it never gets old. You can't kill me. There's nothing you can do to stop me. The time has come, Morgrain, Tagona whispers. We must act now. Mutasifin imbued me with deadly powers. He's been making me into a weapon, something he can use against his enemies in the Abyss. Demon lords and anyone else who possesses the power of the Nahindrian crystals. But I'm dangerous to him, too. That same Nahindrian power allows him to be revived in a new body after death. I beg you, Morgrain. For the light of heaven, please, let me stop him. Let me die while I am still me. And let my death Put an end to our enemy once and for all. Tagona, wait, what? She wants to die? Mutasifin frowns. He abandons his monologue and tries to overhear the angel's whispered conversation with Hugh. He abruptly grabs a small glass and brings it to his lips. Observe, I will drink this, and my body will die, but I will live again. I will be resurrected in a different location. Can we save Targona? Hmm. Hmm. Hmm.
I don't want to see her die. Spoiler, Mutasifin's called okay. Um Hmm. Hmm. I don't want Targona to die. How, what do I... Targona... Prevent... Death. Um, Targona... Motasafen... Sacrifice. Can you heal... Okay, okay, okay. The angel path to heal her. Hmm. Okay. Angel secret ending question. Um, I had the option. Okay, mage in the angel path. You can save them. Hmm. I don't know. No, 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 no. I don't need to sacrifice you to stop him. The angel stares at you with wide eyes, but how is that even possible? What's going on? I don't think. The demon is about to disappear, to slip through your fingers like water. But you know that you can stop him. You have a connection with Chagona, the light of heaven that you both share. You can feel the poison running through her veins, the power of the Nahindrian crystal. Mutasifen made Targona into a living weapon, capable of suppressing other sources of Nahindrian power. But you can extract this poison from her body. You can save the angel, and then you can use the Nahindrian essence you pulled from her veins while it is still potent. Heal Targona and punish Mutasifen. I'm putting an end to this whole charade. Let justice prevail. What makes you so confident? A single ray of light pierces the demon's chest and he falls lifeless to the ground. He is gone. He's truly dead this time. I can feel it, and the poison of the abyss it is gone too, it, it, it's no longer inside me. The angel's eyes widen in amazement and she gazes at you in silent gratitude. How can you, there be any doubt that you are an angel, a real angel, as real as any of us, and far more powerful? We are finished here. We'll return to Dresden to heal and recover, but rest assured we will be there for you when you need us. Okay. Mutasifen. Corrosive bomb, helmet. There's something here. Okay. More traps. That was easy. <laughs> lock picking. Oh, boots. Oh, and good ones of that, I hope. Boots. Magical whirl. Whenever the wearer of these boots kills a demon for the first time in a battle, the next spell becomes quickened. Okay, I don't care about that. Just want to see how they look. Okay, they might be awesome. Oh, they're not bad. And they should fit her perfectly. I mean, they should also fit him perfectly, but base speed is better. I mean, they look better, yes, but <laughs> freeze rain is just, the values on these ones are just better. So we're going to give her these boots. Mm. Yeah. Overlord's chainmail. Hmm. Yeah, come. On. Let's give her the full plate. Why not? She's a warrior after all.
excerpt from Mutasifin's notes. The experiment was not entirely successful, but it was certainly entertaining. It is well established that Nahindrian energy only has an effect on demons and other creatures who contain the essence of the abyss. It is also known that predatory crystals from the plane of Earth feed on minerals. Well, soon I will introduce you all to my newest pet. A predatory crystal fed on the Hindrian shard. I definitely need an army of these. Yeah, we fought that one. That one was, was very strong. Wait, she has a big hammer. I never noticed. Nice. Uh, what are you doing here? Sort of heaven? Okay. Yeah, um, can we leave? Follow if you dare. Whatever. Yeah, we still need to find an entrance to the ineluctable prison, right? Oh, we can enter this location? What? That's a bit odd. Uh, where's our main army? There. Summon Heavenly Host. Perfect. Um, until next time.